All right, there we go. Hopefully everybody can see it and hopefully we'll have smooth sailing here. Again, I'm Jackie Almer. We're going to talk today about making money blogging with pure leverage. And I wanted to go quickly go through some of the things that we're going to cover today. Why blogging is hot, what to sell or offer, and how you get paid because that's a huge question that people have. How do I actually make money doing this? The four action steps that are important that you'll take on a daily basis in order to monetize that blog. How to get started right how to be authentic because your, your story and what you have to share with the world is very important, how to build the list because you've probably heard that. It's not just blogging and getting out there. People find your blog one time. That's great. You've got to have a way to bring them back and your list does that. Talk about scheduling your calendar and then avoiding overwhelm and then we'll get into some questions and answers that you might have for that. Okay, so Starting off with why is blogging hot? Well, it's a great uh, it's a great question, and most people know that it is. Before we get into that, though, what I really want to do is just share a little bit of my story and how I came to realize that I'm actually a professional blogger. It's kind of funny. Um, almost 20 years ago, I started looking for a home based business when my son. The, the little the, the big tall one there off to the right when my son was born I started looking for a way that I could work from home that I could have a business and um, you know and, and earn an income of what I needed to do to do just that so I got started like many people I started researching and everything kept leading me back to something called network marketing uh, and I got started with network marketing I built my business the old-fashioned traditional way that many of you may have experience with I made my warm market list, I called those people, I took them to meetings, I had in-home meetings, I did all of that. And that was great and I was building a successful business, but once I ran out of people to talk to, uh, it was kind of a challenge. It was like, you know, wh wh where do I go to find more people? And really I was starting to feel like I didn't have a home-based business anymore. I was running around from place to place, I had small children, and I wasn't truly at home, it wasn't home-based. So about six years into it, I found the internet. Uh, I The company that I was with at the time was one of the very first companies to start offering uh, personal websites, websites that we could use to sign up customers, sign up distributors, share the opportunity. And I truly knew nothing about the internet. I really didn't know anything about computers either. I'd never taken a computer class, never taken an internet marketing class, um, certainly didn't know anything about HTML and website design or any of that. I'd never even heard that terminology before. And I, so I went to this internet marketing seminar that was being offered and it was kind of a waste of time. They were trying to sell me $5,000 space on an internet mall, which I didn't even understand what that was. But what really intrigued me were the stats and statistics that they were talking about with the internet. How, you know, the internet was the biggest research tool in our lifetime. You know, the, the usage of it was, it was doubling and tripling every 60, 90 days at that point, and people were going to the internet to find a restaurant in Buffalo, New York. They were going there to find the operating hours of Disneyland. They were going there to find all different types of things. And I kept thinking to myself, well, if somebody's looking for a home-based business or a side business or something they can do to make money outside of a traditional job, then surely some of those people who are looking are going to the internet to find an answer to that. And I was just convinced that I was onto something. And that was 13 years ago. I, I actually started in October of 1999. My biggest fear at that time was that Y2K was going to come along when the clock, clock struck midnight on January 1st, 2000, that it was going to wipe out everything that we had come to know and love in our lifetime, and that all of my efforts online would be for naught. But as we all know, we're here 13 and a half years later, and that didn't happen, and things kept going. So 13 and a half years later, I've come to realize that the bulk of my success and my income has truly come from blogging. Those are the things that I was taught way back in the day. Now, it wasn't called a blog. They were websites, and it was more article marketing and different things like that. So some of the terminology has changed, and some of the platforms have changed. But really, what I do still, even today, it hasn't changed a bit. So that's just a little bit of my story. I found the internet. I hopped on, and I really have never looked look back whatsoever so now let's talk about why blogging is hot well as I kind of mentioned the internet is the number one research tool that's out there 
think about the last time really that you even went to the library to do research. Most people don't even do that very often anymore. We don't really buy encyclopedias. We go to Wikipedia online, um, dictionary.com. I mean, all different things when you think about it. The internet has replaced so many of those different research methods that we used to have. And so it's the number one research tool. So just like I said, people go online looking all the time for solutions. Now here's an interesting statistic. Over three million people a day go onto Google and type in some type of online business, home business, some type of business search for something that they can do either using the internet or something outside of the typical job situation. What I learned about blogging is that when you can establish yourself online as a go-to person in whatever your target market is, your niche market, you can easily begin to attract an audience who's interested in what you have to say. And what I saw really quickly is that it really was a tool that could work for me 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It was a sales tool that would work for me whether I was home doing something else, you know, sitting on this webinar, for instance, right now I'm here, but guess what? My blog, my videos, all the content that I've put out online is out there working for me every single day while I'm doing other things. I could go to the beach with my family. I could go on vacation. I could be sleeping. I could be doing any number of things, and my business could be working for me. In fact, um, Tuesday at 2 in the morning, um, I got a new sign-up in my business, and I was fast asleep at that time. I didn't have to be there physically present. So that's just an idea of one of the things that just really quickly jumped out at me. I, I wanted something that would truly leverage my time. I also realized that there were multiple ways of getting traffic to my business, my opportunity, how I was looking to make money. Now, in the offline world, I had to be out and about. I had to be the public figure. I had to either be making phone calls, going to networking events, calling on businesses, whatever it is that I was doing to promote a business or, or anybody's doing, we have to go out and be the, be the face behind the business. But again, just like I mentioned, I could have a video. So people who go to YouTube looking for business information or people who go to Facebook and look in groups or people who go to LinkedIn or people who go to Google, the search engine, there were multiple ways that I could bring traffic in and share, have them take a look at my business and it really became their idea and not my idea. See, my goal was to become the hunted and not be the hunter. That was you know, truly appealing to me and something that I've never quite let go of and, and it's a good thing. Now, talking about the monetization part of it, this is a question that quickly comes up for people. Great, I have a blog, I have these tools, but how do I make money with it? What do I sell or what do I offer? Well, if you go online today, I'm, you can attest to this, you can buy just about anything through the internet. Uh, we recently bought a car for my daughter. Guess where we found it? On Craigslist. Um, although we didn't actually make the purchase through there, that's where we went to do the very first thing. You can order food to go these days online and then go pick it up. There's not anything that can't be bought or sold basically through the internet. It's, it's quite amazing. So you can sell or offer absolutely anything you want. Pure Leverage, the company that we're working with to provide this blogging platform, is a business in and of itself. You can actually offer the tools that people need to build a business on the internet. I always like to say it's kind of like the gold, the California gold rush. You know, there's a saying out there, who made the most money in the California gold rush? The miners or the people who sold the picks and shovels? Well, without a doubt, it's the people who sold the picks and shovels who made the most money. The picks and shovels that people need online include a blog, an autoresponder, lead capture, uh, web conferencing, just like we're doing here. You know, gosh, we have Chris from Belgium who's sitting here, and I'm in Lake Arrowhead, California. I don't know how far apart we are, Chris, but how amazing is that, that we can be sitting here um, sharing time together and doing business together. So, you know, that was one of the things that absolutely appealed to me. So Pure Leverage itself is a business that you could provide and sell and market to people as you're out blogging. Maybe you have a primary network marketing company, an MLM, or a party plan company. You can market that through your blog and website. That's where I built the biggest bulk of my income over the last 13 years was blogging about home business, my experiences, being a stay-home mom, building with kids, all that kind of stuff. And ultimately through that, I channeled people into my primary network marketing company. So that's how I've chosen, for the most part, to, to um, monetize and get paid for that. Affiliate products. 
kind of like Pure Leverage. There's a lot of affiliate products out there. People who are looking for an online business need the tools and everybody else looking for an online business need the tools. So I've made money over the last 13 and a half years selling very select affiliate programs too. I don't spend a lot of time marketing these, but they're hosted right there on my blog so that when people go to specific pages and go looking, they can find those, they can buy them. Maybe you're a coach or maybe you have some of your own products to sell. Um, not everybody does, but some people do. You can certainly market those through your blog and through your online presence as well. But the biggest thing is to keep it simple, to start with something that you know feels right for you and to you know really lay out a plan of how you're going to do that and how it's going to work. And so that really does take us to you know how, how it is that we get paid. It takes us right into that part of it because that's that's it. You know, as I mentioned, the biggest bulk of my income over the years has come from channeling people into my network marketing opportunity. So this is an example of my blog over at JackieAlmer.com. You'll see there I have some numbered arrows and the first one that you see is the little link, the number one that says work with Jackie. Well that's where people can click. They can go all through my blog and find all different kinds of generic information and videos on how to build a successful business. And ultimately some of the people who land there are looking for a business. They can click on work with Jackie, go into that, and they can opt in to learn more about working with me in my primary network marketing business and they can also learn more about Pure Leverage. You'll see number two there, Jackie's training. That's where I've actually developed over the course of time some of my own products. I have CDs, I teach people how to market online, different things like that, ebooks, and different things along those lines. That's where they can find that. Then of course uh, number three there, start an online global business. That talks to people about the tools of Pure Leverage and how to get started with that you know, building a business and that monetizes my blog. And then the fourth little arrow there, grabbing my ebook, Profit in Your PJs, that's how I begin to build my list, build the relationship and have the opportunity to, you know, generate an interest over time with some of those people of working with me. So that's just a little bit of the monetization process of that. So hopefully that gives you kind of an overview of how it works. You, you choose a, a topic, you're going to blog on it, and it drives people back. So again, on the how to get paid, the blog basically establishes you as the go-to person in your target market. Now a big key to that is picking a target market. I always tell people what you don't want to do is become a flea market. Now you can offer a lot of different affiliate products and different things like that off of your blog as long as they kind of correlate to the same theme. But just like you wouldn't want to go to your insurance agent to buy um, fishing tackle and lures, you kind of don't want to do that with your blog either. And I will tell you early on when I first started online, I made a little bit of a mistake with that uh, in the beginning and I quickly realized that that was a, a, a absolute road to disaster. So I always try to you know, help, help people kind of lay out a game plan of what it is they want to market and then figure out how you know, how they're going to go about that, the content that they're going to provide, because as we know, and as you know, from the searches that you do online, when you go to Google looking for something specific, you want to land on a website. When you click from there, you want to land on a website that's specific to the search that you put in there. You don't want it to be crowded with a whole lot of other information, because that gets overwhelming. And as you blog, and as you establish your blog, you're going to build that list of interested prospects. I showed you number four there on the last slide, and we'll get into some of this. I showed you exactly, you know, there's the opt-in box where people can opt in, get on my list, and I can begin to communicate with them over time. Many of you are here today because you're on my list, and you got an email announcing that I was doing this webinar. So that's a lot of how it works. Then again, you sell products and services, and over time, through your blogging, through your list, and through building that relationship, e emailing your list and bringing them back to your blog, you establish what we call the know you, like you, and trust you piece that's so important online. I mean, think about it. How many times have you landed on a website? Do you buy right away? Unless it's target.com or something that is already established that you know well, when you land on a website of a person who you don't know, very often we don't buy right away. We don't sign up right away. We don't join right away. And it's not going to be any different for you. That's where building that list is important and then working to build that relationship with people so that over time you will establish that trust and people will get to know you. Uh, it's kind of funny, uh, one of, a, a new team partner of mine 
uh, he he was on the webinar. I, I did the same webinar last Monday. He was on it. He got signed up right away, and then he sent me an email and said, "I got all signed up, but I'm not really sure what this is. I'm not really. I haven't totally figured out what the product is." And I had to laugh. Um, in fact, um, I emailed him back and said, "Well, we definitely need to talk." And when we did, what he said to me was, "You have a lot of credibility with me, and you know you've never steered me down a bad path before, and so I trust what you're offering." And that really meant a lot to me, and it kind of um, shares with you that important part of the credibility. Now that's not to say I haven't made some mistakes in my time, haven't signed up with some dog programs that I wish that I hadn't, but you know that's all part of the process, that's all part of experimenting and part of doing well online and being authentic is being willing to share your mistakes and failures along with your successes. So you know that's definitely a big part of it too. So we're working to establish that know you, like you, trust you and also establish you as a go-to person. Now, I mentioned, so that is a little bit of the monetization piece, and maybe in the back of your mind you're already thinking of some ways that you would monetize a blog, if, you know, should you decide to get started with it, or maybe you're already working with this and you're kind of trying to pull all that together. These are the four daily action steps, and by action steps, there's more that you need to do in terms of the training process, but these are the action steps that you're going to want to take on a regular basis to get the word out there. Unlike Field of Dreams, which uh, has the tagline, if you build it, they will come, it doesn't exactly work like that with your blog. When you first get started blogging, it's like being a little tiny rowboat out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Nobody knows that you're there, right, in most cases, so you have to be um, really diligent about driving traffic there. And that's what we want to do. So that's part of these four daily action steps that are going to move you along the line of driving that traffic there and getting yourself out there to where your little rowboat gets bigger and bigger and bigger and pretty soon you become a cruise ship and people go online looking for you. Hopefully that analogy makes some sense to you. So step number one is to blog daily. Certainly blog daily for your first 90 days so that you can begin to get your content out there and begin to develop a presence. Over time, you know, you can back off of that a little, but you certainly can't go wrong by continuing to put content out there on a daily basis. The next step is to market your content. It's great to put it out there, and while it's important for those first 90 days for sure to be focusing on content, once, it, once it's out there, again, you're still kind of a tiny rowboat out there in the middle of the Pacific, so you've got to do some marketing steps that drive people back to it promoting out on social media, uh, different things like that. And those are all part of, th that. those are all big pieces of the training that you'll get with us as part of Pure Leverage. We have a whole training suite that goes with it to teach you not only how to blog, what to blog about, how to monetize it, but also how to market that message out there on a regular basis. As you do those things, those are the things that are going to build your list. Your lead capture that's there, and want to know more about what it is that you have to say. And then as you build that, the important key is to market to that list, to build that relationship, to develop some trust, and again, that know you, like you, trust you. You know, it's kind of funny. I heard uh, someone talking the other day who was sharing the importance of building that relationship and marketing to your list on a regular basis. And I'll be the first to tell you, I've kind of dropped the ball on that over the course of time. I'm not always so consistent, but boy, I've, I've got it now and I'm definitely getting into it. And I've done well in 13 and a half years and that, that just should really assure you that you can make some mistakes and you can still go on to be successful and you're constantly learning. It's, it's a constant learning process. But marketing to that list is a big part of it. So what I was sharing is in the story that I heard, he was saying, um, he asked the audience, how many of you watch Oprah? Now the Oprah, the old Oprah show's not on anymore. And, um, I don't watch a lot of TV, but there are a lot of people who are absolutely avid, diligent watchers of the Oprah show. Some people can relate to The Voice or American Idol or different things like that. Man, you know, there are people who absolutely block off uh, that time frame constantly every week and they don't miss that show or they TiVo it or whatever and they come back to it. But you get the point. And people rely on that. They expect that the Oprah show is going to be on, you know, every Tuesday at 3 in the or every day at 3 in the afternoon or whatever, and they became accustomed to it. You kind of want to develop that same thing with your list. Now, the reality of it is, just like the Oprah show, a lot of people, you know, did miss it. Maybe they didn't catch it every single day. Same thing with your list. Some of your emails are going to get deleted. People get busy. I think about how many emails I delete on a regular basis, too. But when you're there consistently showing up, 
you keep your name and your face and your message out there in front of people. And the whole goal is to capture those people when the buying time is right for them. And that could be buying into your network marketing opportunity. It could be buying into pure leverage and starting their own business. It could be buying into a host of, of all different types of things. Whatever it is that you're marketing, that's what that's about. Okay, so I'm um, talking about blogging daily. This is just an example of my blog. If you go to JackieElmer.com, you'll see, and you'll see those little red arrows there. Those are just an example of blog titles, blog posts that I put in there. Okay, and you'll see if you pay attention to the red one with the phone, you'll see then how I marketed that. So these are blog posts that I created every day or so, you know, something new out on my blog. So I put those in, those go into my blog. Now, an important part of the blogging process is to always have a call to action. Always know what your most wanted response is to what you want them to do. Okay? Do you want them to join you in your network marketing opportunity? Great. Then put a sign-up link in there so that they always have the opportunity. Do you want them to sign up for your newsletter? Whatever it is, have a call to action. And you'll see that I sign there, that first red arrow, I sign with my signature, I have my photo in there, and then I have a call to action. I want to make sure that they're signed up on my newsletter to get my profit in your PJs report. And the very bottom one says, if you're happy in a business, that's great. But if you're looking for a business and you're looking for a mentor and a coach, I would love to talk to you. I would love to share with you what I'm doing. Click here. Boom. That takes them into workwithjackie.com and they can opt in to know more. So that's a big part of your blogging process is to have that call to action. And that's an area where a lot of people drop the ball. We're going to be doing a lot of training on that within the Pure Leverage system to teach people how to do that in their email messages, in their blogging messages, in their videos, in everything that they do. Now we go to Market Daily, right? Okay, here's the Market Daily piece. There's the red phone. Remember how I mentioned that? This is actually an example. Now, I create mostly generic content. My content does not revolve around, here's my opportunity, here's what I want you to buy from me or join from me. It, my content has always been pretty much designed around a generic theme of, here's how you do this to be successful, knowing that a certain number of those people will ultimately want to learn how to be successful working with me. So this blog post was about how many leads each month should you be talking to. So I created the blog post, and then part of my marketing it daily was to post it out on LinkedIn. This is actually an example of a post that I made out on LinkedIn. It's generic content geared to my audience on LinkedIn, and when they click to learn more about that, it takes them right back to my blog where they can continue to learn from that. They can opt in for my newsletter. They can sign up to learn more about working with me in my primary opportunity. They might even buy one of my programs of power recruiting or different things that I have there that are available. But that's part of the marketing daily strategy. Okay, And you know, it's kind of funny. Once you get into a role with a lot of these things, you'll find that it really does become second nature. You know, people ask me, I mean, I have about a two hour time block that I do this, 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 and this. It's consistent every day. And then I have the rest of the day to do whatever I want, whether it's calling leads, whether it's you know, shooting more videos, whether it's developing more content, working with my team, whatever it is that I want to do, as long as I know that I'm taking those steps, that's a good thing. Now, this is another example of marketing. This is on Facebook, on my Facebook page, where I created uh, a video actually about Facebook blunders that a lot of people do, and then I put the link to that video out there. Again, at the right inside there, they can click, and it'll take them back to my blog, back to my site, where I can capture their information and begin that relationship with them. So that's an example of marketing daily. All right, so now let's move into the next step that we take once, you know, we've talked about blogging daily. Oh, I'm sorry, this is, and this is an example of Twitter. Uh, so this is the Twitter screen, and those are all examples over time of different links to different content that I've put out there in my Twitter stream. Again, all generic based, but where do you think it takes them to read more? takes them right back to my blog. So that's a big part of the whole market daily process. So I've given you an example of LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. There are others. Pinterest is a, is a great example. Um, I actually finally sponsored my first person through Pinterest, so that was kind of fun. Uh, and I was amazed when I said, where did you find me? And he said, I found you on Pinterest. I was like, wow, because I'm not super active over there, so it was kind of interesting. Okay, then the next step is we build a list. So as I continue to blog daily, 
market that content and bring people back to my blog, I'm ultimately building my list with those people who say, wow, I like her message. I want to know what it is that she has to say. So this is an example of a lead capture form that's on my blog. Now, the lead capture system and the ability to create your own for whatever business you're marketing comes with the Pure Leverage tool suite. So it comes right along with that, absolutely. So you have that included. This is an example of a lead capture page that comes with the Pure Leverage. So you can build a list using the Pure Leverage tools if you were going to specifically be marketing the Pure Leverage opportunity. That's one that comes with you know, your $25 package. It is included in there. People just put their information in there and you begin to build your list. So that's an example of how that works. Now, let's talk about marketing to that list. As you build that list, it's important to continue to communicate with them. So this is an example of the Pure Leverage email list. Now, what I do is I have a set number. I have about 20 pre-written uh, autoresponders, messages that go out to people every day for the first 20 days or so that share information with them about the business, about what they get, and what they can expect from me, and really works on building that relationship with them. So that's an example of the pre-written messages that are available. And, and we have those available for Pure Leverage for you, you know, should you decide that this is a blogging system that you want to use. And that's specifically for Pure Leverage. If you're working within another primary program or promoting something, you're going to you know, have to develop some of those on your own or talk to someone who's already developed them. Now, in addition to the, the pre-written campaign, I also do what's called a broadcast feature. And again, many of you who are here experience that because I invited you to this webinar. Obviously, that wouldn't be part of my pre-formatted message series because this day will pass, this time will pass, and while I'll likely do this again, it won't be at this date and time. So this, the message that you got is an example of the broadcast feature that I sent out inviting you to be here. So this is just another example of how it works within the Pure Leverage campaign. So you'll see there the, the red arrow there next to the five little uh, dots. Those are all message series that I already have set up to go. One today, one tomorrow, and that type thing. So I try to communicate with my list on a daily basis and let them know what we're up to, inviting people to this, different things like that. So let's talk about these tools then. We've talked about the four action steps. What comes with the Pure Leverage tool suite? Well, you get your blog, which is a huge part of it because I will tell you in 13 and a half years, my biggest challenge has always been duplicating what I do online from the technology perspective. So how cool will it be to have you know, just a few simple clicks and boom, you've got a WordPress blog that's set up and ready and you can personalize it with what you want to have on it. Now it's currently in beta testing. I know Joel and I are holding our, cro crossing our fingers and you know, excitedly awaiting for that to come out because we have a lot of really big plans for content creation and really getting people moving along with that whole blogging process so that you can get your name out there and be successful. The lead capture and autoresponder, that's already set up, live and working. Video email, really powerful, really powerful video email is. It's amazing what you can send with that. Um, I actually had sent out a personal video email to a few leads who had opted in and two of them signed up within the first five minutes of me sending a personal video email that looks kind of like me talking on the screen here. Hey, thanks for opting in. Thanks for you know requesting to know more. Would love to learn a little bit more about you, just different things like that. But it makes it personal and face and hear my voice and basically almost get a live experience of who I am. Video email does the same thing. And boy, it Sorry guys, we have just a little bit of weather here today and I'm wondering if that's what is knocking me off. I'm, you know, I'm in a small mountain community uh, and sometimes when the weather goes down, I definitely find that my internet is affected by it. So let me get back into the PowerPoint. But here's the thing, isn't this cool? Like I really 
love that I didn't have to leave my home to do this or any of these type things. Let me see if I can get to the slide that I need where I was. Oh, there we go. Um, anyway, I, you know, I just love the ability to do this. And this just goes to show you don't have to be perfect. Uh, you don't have to, you know, have, have everything absolutely perfect in order to be successful doing this. And in fact, the less perfect you are, as I am today, uh, the better off you, you will do very often because people realize that they can do this too. So it's just like we're all sitting down having coffee, right? And you just can pretend like I got up to go get a refill. All right, so I mentioned all those four tools that come with it, and all that's for $25 a month. And I will tell you, that is amazing. That is an amazing price because over the course of my 13 and a half years marketing online, I've paid a whole lot for that on a monthly basis. And in fact, I'm disentangling myself even right now from some other services that I have and use um, that are costing me a whole lot more than that just for the one service alone. And as I mentioned in the beginning, you can actually make an income and a very lucrative full-time income just marketing pure leverage itself. So it does have that affiliate income option that's available with it. Not to distract you from anything that you might already be doing. I'm a big believer in multiple streams of income. I can tell you over the 20 years that I've been in a home-based business, that has served me very well over the course of time when companies went bankrupt or different thing, pay plans changed or different things happened when I was really happy that I had other income sources to fall back on. So in today's economy, we don't think any, you know, people get two jobs sometimes. They have a job and a side business, a lot of different things. So those multiple streams of income, I think, are important for all of us. Even if you are someone who invests in real estate as a stream of income, that's still a side stream. So there's nothing wrong with having those multiple streams of income. So let's talk a little bit about getting your business started right, because this is a big piece of it. Yeah, it sounds great. How fun to sit at home, blog, and make money, right? I mean, does that not sound very engaging to everybody? It certainly does to me. But you have to know what goes into getting your business started right. I'm here today because I have a really powerful belief and mindset that I'm going to be successful. That doesn't mean that I haven't gone through all the pitfalls and all the challenges that everyone else faces when they're trying to do this. Believe me, I've gone through them all. I've heard no as many times or more than anybody probably who's on this conference with me today. So those are just some important things to keep in mind. So your reason why is the big driver. And it really does all start with that. Because I will tell you, if your reason why isn't big enough, you'll quit in 90 days. You'll move on to the next thing. You'll give up. You'll give up on your dreams. Uh, you won't take the action steps that you need to. You really, truly don't if your why is not strong and compelling. Now, my why for years was my children. You know, it started out as my children. I did not want to go back to work. I did not want to put them in daycare. That was totally a non-negotiable to me. So I stayed in the trenches and committed. Now today, my son is almost 21. My daughter goes off to college in August. And I've had to identify a new why. And now it really comes down to helping other moms and dads too be able to do what I've done. You know, be able to have that work at home uh, situation to where they don't have to leave and go to the job and do different things like that. That's not that doesn't mean to imply that hard work isn't involved in it, but when you learn how to work smart and not just hard, you really can condense a lot of that down into a shorter work day for sure. And it's important to understand the timeline of success with this. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not like you're going to put up your first blog post and drive a million people to it and they're all going to be interested in joining you. There's a process. Uh, some of you can think about that now. Maybe you've been on my list for a week. Maybe you've been on it for a month. Maybe you've been on it for a couple of years. You know, it all depends. I, I know some of you have because I recognize the names that are on here, some of you. And you know who you are. But So the timing has to be right. So it's important for all of us to understand the timeline of success and the fact that you have to stay committed and focused. And then the pitfalls. The biggest downside of the Internet is that everything looks terrific, right? It's so easy to get caught up in the bright, shiny object syndrome. I think you know what I'm talking about when I say that. And I certainly sit here before you as someone who's been a victim of that a few times in my life. Now today I've learned to be more disciplined, learned to be more focused, and learned to really evaluate things before I jump and, and try to weigh out how does this fit into my overall why? How does this fit into my business plan? And a big part of it too of being successful is the daily training. 
I absolutely commit to daily training every single day. I probably do two to three hours, honestly, of daily training, especially right now because I'm really uh, working on this blogging platform because I have such a passion about the internet and I have such a passion about teaching other people how to be successful with it. So um, Joel Peterson, who you see on here, Joel and I are busy you know, working on um, a, a whole training platform for our team here in Pure Leverage, which can help anybody in any business, but we want to teach you all of the all of the things that we've done over the course of time to, to be successful. And Joel is a big internet marketer. I don't think he's I think he's off now, but he was on anyway. He's a big internet marketer and truly um, has made millions through the internet. So he's a great person to to work along with us in this, and he's done network marketing too. And then it's important that you set intentions and goals, and that's a big thing. For you know, every single day, set an intention of what you want to accomplish for that day, and then stay focused on that intention. Now, I mentioned I wanted to talk a little bit about being authentic, and I think this is a pitfall that a lot of people run into when they start online. They they try to be someone who they're not, and you know, I can't be you, and you can't be me, and I can't be Tony Robbins. I you know can't be Beyonce different things like that. You have to find your own authentic voice within what you're doing. And it's important to know that your story sells. Now, so often I hear from people, you know, gosh, I don't have a story. I don't have anything to say. Who's going to listen to me? And you know what? I said that very same thing way back 13 years ago when I was on a on a one-on-one -on -one conference with a guy named Jonathan Mizell, who I'd actually, you know, gotten brave and asked him to take a look at my website. And, and he did. He gave very freely of his time. And he told me that, you know, the number one thing is he said, you've got to be building a list. You need to get a lead capture on there. You've got to be building your list and, and you've got to be communicating with them. And that was 13 years ago. Things haven't changed. And I said to him, gosh, you know, what, what, am I, what do I have to say? Who's going to listen to a stay-home mom? I mean, I, I don't really have anything to write about. And he said, well, you're smart. You'll figure it out. You've got an audience out there. You've got to figure out how to find them, communicate with them, and appeal to them. And everybody has that. We all have a story. And what you realize over time is that your, your challenges become as big a part of your story as your successes. You know, maybe you've been online for a long time looking for something. You've been struggling. You've bought programs. You've done this. You've done that. You've been trying to figure out a way to make money. That's all part of your story. Because how many thousands of other people out there, how many of the three million people who go online every day looking, how many of those people do you suppose have your same story in, in that regard. And if you just stay with it and you develop that success story to go with it, you've got a huge story then that's going to absolutely be appealing. So you want to develop your story, you want to share the highs, and you want to share the lows. And as much as anything, you don't want to try to be anyone else. Okay? So, you know, people always say, well, then what do I blog about? One of the first things that I like to get people started blogging about is your journey in this, which again is your story. What things have you done that didn't work? You don't have to name companies by name or different things, but you can if you can laugh at your own challenges and laugh at your own frustrations and the different things that you've done, you'll be amazed at what kind of business you can build. You'll be amazed at the people who will follow you, who will email you and say, wow, you know, that was so authentic and I can so relate. Or, oh, I loved that video because I could really tell that you went through the same challenge that I did. You know, I mentioned I've signed up in some dog programs. I'm guessing some of you have too. I embrace all of that. Every time I've fallen flat on my face, I've learned to embrace it because, again, it's part of my challenge. Because then when somebody comes to me and says, wow, you know, I, I tried this and I failed, then I can say, guess what? I tried something like that too and I failed. But I picked myself up and I kept going. Or when people say to me, you know, I don't really know anything about technology, I can say to them, guess what? I didn't either. And I still don't consider myself a techie person. I keep getting bumped off the internet, right? And not that I not that I control that, but different things along those lines. I have always put myself out there as a non-techie person, but I am a marketing person. And I do know that there are that hundreds of thousands of people out there just like me who wanted the same thing that I wanted. I wasn't looking for gangster income to begin with. That, that changed over time, I will admit. All I was looking for was to make enough money to make sure that I could be home with my kids. And over time, as I got closer to that goal, my goal stretched and it grew. And now I just have such a passion about reaching all the way to Belgium or reaching all the way down to Zimbabwe, South Africa, or 
or Zimbabwe, Africa, and South Africa, and you know, reaching out to people all around the world and helping them do the same thing. Because that's one thing that I learned through the internet. We're all pretty much the same. It doesn't matter what country we live in. We all kind of want the same things. You know, we want to be happy. We want security. We want to engage in work for income that we enjoy doing. And you know, for me, I, I love every minute about, well, almost every minute, some of the techie stuff I don't love, but I love every minute of blogging and shooting videos and being on webinars with people like you and you know, sharing that story. So to get started, you blog about your business experiences. You blog about whatever it is that your target audience wants to hear about. And you'll know as you sit down and work through you know, some of our training on who is my target audience? What is the message that I want to get out there and deliver to them? And, and we also, you know, as part of our team, we provide a content strategy on a weekly basis to give you ideas of different things to blog about. So, you know, you can, that'll get you started. You know, if you can just kind of uh, tie into that for a while, you'll find that you'll be very successful. Okay, more on building the list. I know that I've already talked about this, but this is such an important part of it. Uh, because a lot of internet marketers will tell you the biggest mistake that they made early on, even Joel Peterson who was on here, he'll tell you that was his mistake. He started internet marketing and was doing well, but he didn't start his, his building his list until years in. The reality of it is how many times have you landed on a blog or website, you got distracted, you closed out the window, you thought it was really cool and you never went back to it because you couldn't find it again and you had never signed up to get on their list and so they had never been able to email you to remind you to come back. So building your list is so important and through that list you want to define your target and your message. Now you, there's free and paid ways that you can drive traffic to build that list to get people to those pages to opt in and that's all part of the training that's for another day but then as I mentioned you want to email that list on a daily basis and build that relationship with them. So how do you get all this done? That may be your next question. You may be looking around thinking, gosh, you know, how do I get it all done? Maybe you work full time, you have children. You know what? We're all busy, but we all have the same 24 hours in a day. And for the most part, it's how we prioritize that 24 hours. For some of you, you may think about the time that you waste on Facebook, even out there, just going through endless things. You know, I, a lot of people think I'm on Facebook all day. I'm really not. I use tools that make it look like I'm out there, and I use downtimes when I'm not doing, when I'm, there's nothing else I can be doing, small pockets of time to be out on Facebook. But I leverage it for my business, definitely. So I'm a big believer that you put it on the calendar because what gets on the calendar is what gets done. And you have to be disciplined. You have to discipline yourself. It's no different than a diet or working out at the gym or any of that. Who controls that ability for you? You do. So you have to get disciplined. And a lot of that comes back to your why. It really does. When your why is strong enough, it makes it a whole lot easier to get disciplined. So I'm a no excuses kind of person. I know when I'm making excuses, and I know when people are making excuses to me too. Um, you know, let's just be honest. A lot of us do that. But when we really look at it, very often we're the reason for our own success or lack of success. And so the final thing with that is stop saying that you're busy because we're all busy. The, 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 that's like one of my biggest pet peeves is to have people say to me, oh, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I know. I'm busy too. Believe me. Very busy. But I, I'd rather be busy and prioritize my calendar to do this than to have to go off to a job that I don't enjoy to earn an income in many cases that is way underpaid for what I'm worth. And I think that you know many of you can relate and feel the exact same way. So you schedule your calendar. You control all that. You've got to get it out there. And then you've got to be the one to make sure that it gets done. And that kind of brings us to the final slide here before we get into some questions and stuff, and that is avoiding overwhelm. Again, who's in charge of your calendar? Who gets to be in charge of your focus? I know it's easy to get distracted. I don't know how to tell you how to not get distracted other than, you know, dig into what it is that you really want, dig into your why, and commit to that, and don't let anything get in your way. And then just decide, you know, decide that you're going to see the job through in this particular case, in whatever it is that you want to do. So what I want to do now, I don't know if my text box is still locked. If you can, why don't you type a Y in the, in the if somebody will type a Y or ask a question in the box, let me make sure that I have this open. Let me see. Okay, what did I do here? Oh, 
Yep, very good. Thank you, Don. I appreciate that. Okay, so if anybody has any questions, I would love to cover any questions that you have. You can just type them into the box there. When will the blog be live? I don't know exactly, John. I know, and I'm as frustrated as you. I know we're in beta testing. They're about halfway through the bugs that we have. Um, I'm really hoping that tonight on the company um, the company call, they're going to have some announcements for that. But I, I know that Joel and I are working on a system for the team, too, a marketing system. And our goal is to have all of that launched within the next two weeks, and we need the blog to do that. So, you know, fingers crossed. Keep bugging them, though. Keep bugging them. Keep uh, letting them know you're anxious for that because that's what's going to keep it spurred along uh, when we do that. So I, I wish I had a better answer for you, but definitely keep creating that content. Hopefully you're doing that so that you will be way ahead of the game uh, when it comes time. It's kind of funny. I was talking to someone yesterday who was complaining about that, and I get it, but at the same time I asked, you know, well, how far are you, along are you on content? Oh, I haven't even started yet because the blog's not done. And it's like, okay, you're missing the point. Again, kind of like that calendar, be making good use of time now so that you are light years ahead of everybody else. So like I said, the blog's in beta. But we're still working with you to get, you know, some of that content done and things ready. Any other questions? Oh, good. I'm glad you're bursting with ideas. I would love to hear about them. That sounds exciting. Will we have a replay link? Yes, we will, although it's going to be in two parts because I got bumped off the webinar, so um, it's going to be a two-part link. And I may, I don't think I have the technology to, to splice those together, but I did do the one Monday night, and I'm just waiting for it to process. It, it'll be a delay on the webinar, though. Um, so this helps you with your primary program, but there is, all, yes, that's it, Don. There is a, um, an income stream that's available with Pure Leverage. You can opt to access that or not. Certainly, that's up to you, um, and then you can build through your, you know, build a primary program too. Like I mentioned, just even using the webinar, this this web conferencing system, I do uh, opportunity overviews for my primary company using this. So yes, how does it compare to Empower Network? Um, it's a very, it's a similar program. Once the blog is launched, we actually have more tools because we have our own autoresponder. And one thing I can say at this point is you won't have all the language and the F-bombs and the name-calling that go on with Empower Network. And believe me, I'm not being critical. They have their own target audience, um, and they have their own audience that they appeal to, and that's fantastic. I admire what they've done. They're brilliant marketers. Uh, so you just have to decide for yourself in terms of a company culture and the different things like that what's going to be the right fit for you. Um, could I use your affiliate program to promote a Belgian Dutch oh yeah absolutely I mean you would want to write blogs and post videos would you have to write them well I'm, I'm what I'm thinking Chris is that you would probably want to create well okay so answer me this is um, is your Dutch MLM company in any English speaking countries because you can put whatever you want in a video. You can shoot a YouTube video and speak whatever language you want, which I, you know, is, is fabulous. I'm jealous. I wish I could speak Dutch, but um, or even French better. So you can shoot videos in whatever, and you can blog in whatever language that you want. Because obviously, it's the written word, and you're writing in there what what it uh, you know says. So there you have it. Um, so yeah, I mean, you could you could absolutely do that, and I would think you know again, depending. Okay, so not anymore. So if it's only offered in your country with your native language, I would say blog and do all of that in your native language because that's who you're going to be marketing to and appealing to. And you know, you could always create some side pages if you were choosing to promote pure leverage as. Um, as an affiliate program, as an income stream as well, you could also have some blogging done in English as well to appeal to that global market. Because we all know, you know, you can go online and do a search for keywords um, and, you know, target people. So you could kind of combine both, which wouldn't be too difficult to do. You know, could definitely lay out a game plan for that. Your company culture, could you tell me a little bit about it? Well, can can you be more specific about what you mean by that? I mean, um, you know, my personal company culture is helping people be successful, helping the willing be successful. You know, I can't handhold every single person and walk them through exactly how to do this. That's why we have the training. That's why we have the tutorials. So I guess I'm curious about 
more of what you mean about company culture. You know, I mean, um, it, it's, I, I think, yeah, as Dana says, I mean, it's a classy operation. You don't get a lot of bad language, which you do in some other internet marketing type programs. And again, that's not a, that's nothing more than a statement. That's not a judgment call for anyone else other than just me. You know, my target has been the Wham! audience for a long time. And, you know, I, I just like to keep it in business. Certainly, I want to keep things clean and, and a little more professional. So, there you go. Will the blog have links? I don't know the answer to that, John. I don't, um, I don't know if you mean you can click right to it. Those are usually done through plugins. Um, or, or um, yeah, through plugins where you can automatically auto post your posts. I'm guessing, I would be surprised if those weren't in there. But what I will tell you specifically with Facebook, um, you do a lot better if you post it yourself over on Facebook because Facebook uh, really limits third party applications. So if you post through a third party application to Facebook, which would be a plugin through your blog, they know that it's not really you, they're posting it and they give it a lower priority so fewer people will see it. So one thing I've learned on Facebook is that any marketing that I do over on Facebook, for the most part, there's a few exceptions, but I always make sure that I post my links out there myself. So the Buffer app and you know uh, Hootsuite and a lot of those tools that are out there too, same thing, Facebook highly downgrades those. So all of your, everybody won't necessarily see them when they're, when they're posted through that. So hopefully that, uh, hopefully that answers that. Got time for just a couple more questions and then we'll get you out of here. Anybody else with any questions or comments um, would certainly welcome those as well. And if nothing else, then we will call this one a wrap. All right, very good. Well, thanks again, everybody, for being here today. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, yeah, hopefully you got some value here. You got some good information out of it. And I will, uh, we've got, had a delay. There. They've got another piece of equipment on order to, um, to process these videos because actually the cool thing about this web conferencing system, there is actually a recording feature within it. So you can record all that. Um, so we're waiting on some other technology to make it a little stronger and a little faster, but hopefully we'll be getting out there. Um, thanks, Maria. I appreciate that. Um, Yes, John, you post to social media and then link it back to your blog. Yeah, so you would just have a little teaser line, something, uh, you know, kind of like I showed on the LinkedIn. In fact, let me see if I can go back to that. I think it's that one. Yeah, so here's how I posted it out on LinkedIn, and hopefully you can still see that. But all I did was type um, my link, and it automatically pulled the title, which was how many leads each month, and it automatically pulled like the first 200 characters on that. And th actually this particular one, I did this myself. This was not an auto post on LinkedIn. So it would be the same thing um, over on Facebook or anywhere. So you just take your link, and now this one shortened it, which is okay. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of basically how it works. So same thing with Facebook. You know how it is if you put a, 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 a link into the Facebook status update, then if you give it just a second, it kind of populates and usually it shows your an image and whatever it is that you're linking to. So that's exactly how you would do it. Very, very simple. The marketing process is very simple. It's not a super time intensive kind of thing. And Suzanne, in terms of things that you would suggest on a WAM blog, well, let me ask you, what things do you like to read on a WAM blog? You, this is where it becomes important to sit down and think, who's your target audience and what are the challenges that they go through? What's the problem? that your target audience has and what's what, how can you provide a solution to that? What are challenges and different things that, that people um, you know, go through on that? So that's really where it starts. And it's kind of funny, what I learned to do, for a long time I really overanalyzed what I was going to blog about. And what I've learned is that day-to-day -day life, now obviously I don't blog about everything I make for dinner, but day-to-day -day life and the experiences that we go through as a parent as a parent building a business, as a parent working from home, or any of those kind of things, all of that provides great fodder for your blog, great great content. And as you just get started doing it, you you get better at it. You know, I'm not a professional writer by any means, and that was one of the things that I struggled with. You know, oh, my, is my grammar correct? And you know, how do I say this the right way? And I finally decided to let go of that. And one of the things that I learned is write the way you speak. You know, 
I just said, you know, I might not put that in my blog post, but we all tend to talk in fragmented sentences from time to time, you know, loose, different things like that. I've learned to write in that way and not worry so much about being per perfect because I'm not looking to attract a perfect audience. I'm looking to attract an audience who's like-minded to me. So you just kind of blog uh, in the same voice that you would be speaking in because that's what keeps it authentic and lets people relate to you. My two hour a day um, daily method of operation in terms of online marketing, well it includes blogging and creating content which could be shooting videos, creating you know blog posts on my blog and then the marketing of that content and I'm always marketing not only that day's content but I go back I, and I teach people how to repurpose old content. As long as you're writing about things that are what we call evergreen, meaning um, by evergreen, I mean that it's not like an event. So for instance, if I put a blog post out about this webinar today, tomorrow I can't retweet that because it's over and done. Now I could change it and put a link to the replay, and I could certainly do that. But, um, you know, so as long as it's evergreen, you can always go back. I mean, I have blog posts from 2009 that are still relevant. So I keep a running notepad, basically, of all my old blog posts, the link and what they're about, and I just go in and I'll repost some of that old stuff because the reality of it is my blog post from 2009 when I first started my JackieElmer.com blog, it had a whole lot less traffic than I have today. So the handful of people who saw it years ago won't even be really involved in the internet marketing piece of it, the blogging content, shooting videos, and then processing all that, getting it ready, and then marketing it out there. And, and emailing my list. That would make up my two hours of that. And then, you know, other things that I do, if it's, you know, calling prospects who come in. It's kind of funny. I will tell you with the internet marketing piece of it, I do not spend a whole lot of time on the phone. People tend to think that I do, and I really don't. Because if you're doing a good job emailing your list, sharing your story, doing videos, doing these webinars, people begin to get a sense about you and if you're educating and entertaining in your emails, most of the time they get the biggest bulk of their questions answered. So I do not spend a lot of time on the phone call and calling leads. That's just never been my love of doing a business. Some people love it. Some people thrive on it. I don't believe it's the best use of my time. Um, I've never needed that personally. I've been a self-starter and a go-getter all along. Those are really the people who I'm looking for. Um, and, you know, people can tend to overanalyze things to death. And I mentioned, you know, I've signed up in some dog programs over the last 13 and a half years. And I don't mean network marketing programs necessarily, but um, affiliate programs or, you know, tools and different things like that. I've gotten a lot better about learning to, to go, you know, look, figure it out, research it ahead of time. But part of the process of learning and being successful is experimenting. If you don't ever experiment, you don't know. You know, all of us have those times where we worry about, oh, I'm going to make a fool of myself or, oh, I'm scared and timid to do this and you know what almost all of us have made a fool of ourselves at some time but you get over it people don't remember either and people don't think about you nearly as much as we like to tend to think that they do so I just learned to let go of that you know I I got kicked off of a bunch of Yahoo groups this was a long time ago this was back in like 2001 because I lived in Phoenix at the time and I moved to California in 2002 but I was trying to train a new person how to use these groups on the internet and I was trying to show her how to do an email and I just wasn't thinking it through because I was all excited she was actually a friend of mine she was there with me side by side and I'm typing in this email and trying to show her how to how to how to send you know a, a, a blurb out to all these Yahoo groups lists that was something that we worked with <clears throat> back then not so much anymore <clears throat> uh, some of you heard me share the crockpot man story he was on a Yahoo group but anyway um, and I ended up spamming everybody on that list, and I think the subject line said something like, you know, look at this. I mean, it couldn't have looked like more of a piece of spam. And I truly was trying to show her how to send a bulk email to go to all these lists, and I, and I completely spammed everybody. And, and I then immediately sent an email. As soon as I realized what I'd done, because the emails all came back into me, um, and this may not make sense to you if you never experienced Yahoo groups, but don't worry about it. I immediately sent a, an, an email back saying, oh my gosh, I, you know, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to spam you with all that. I was trying to train somebody. And you know what? It was kind of funny. A third of the people I never heard from, no big deal. A third of the people 
wrote me back and they were like, oh, no problem. We've all done that. And then a third of the people ejected me from their list, banned me for life, told me I was a total spammer and everything else. And I was mortified. I was truly mortified when that happened. And now I love sharing it and laughing about it and saying, guess what? I still went on to be a success. I could have chosen to make that be a defining moment that I quit because, oh my gosh, you know, I lost a third of my marketing strategy because I did something stupid. But I just decided to shrug my shoulders and go, you know what? That's not my target audience anyway. The, you know, the people who might be on that list will ultimately find me. They'll come back to me, whatever. So, you know, a big part of it is just experimenting, making mistakes, falling flat on your face, picking yourself back up, and, and being willing then to share those experiences with other people so they realize they don't have to be perfect. And, you know, they can do it too. And especially with the internet, if you listen to any internet marketer tell their story, they will talk to you about burning the midnight oil, staying up till 2 a.m., learning and learning and trying and struggling and failing and all these different things. And then ultimately they go on to be a success. And you know what? It's the same in network marketing. And it's really the same in anything. Unless you ha are someone who has the financial backing to buy a franchise, and really, these days, you can't just buy one franchise. You don't make a fortune owning one McDonald's. You've got to own like five to ten uh, to really be successful and to really earn the kind of you know big income that's out there. It's most the, for most people, they will tell you that even with the big franchises, the Subways, the McDonald's, and those type franchises, at the end of the year when it's all said and done, sixty to seventy thousand dollars a year is what you typically walk away with, which is not bad income. But when you think about babysitting teenagers and, you know, food spoilage and all the things that go into owning that, not to mention the million dollar plus that you have to put up to do something like that. It's the same thing. So whatever it is that you're trying to be successful with, you know, the important thing to remember is that it's a process. It's a learning process. You won't learn it all overnight. Um, and that's okay. You can still go on to be successful and, and have a lot of fun and help a lot of people while you're doing that. So, there you go. I kind of rambled. Didn't mean to get off on the subject. Julie, you had asked about my um, method of operation, but yeah, you know what, Calvin? I, I'm not tech savvy either. I don't. I don't consider myself tech savvy at all. Um, I can't do a spreadsheet to save my life or anything like that, and um, that's okay. I, I'm I'm diligent, so that's been a plus. I'm diligent enough to learn the technology pieces that I need to. But there's a lot of things. You know, I, there's a lot of things that I need to hire someone, even on my own blog, to get fixed. And you know, I'm, one of these days I'll go to Odex, Odesk or Fiverr, or all those different places now that you can outsource that stuff to and get it done. But it hasn't. I just have. I've chosen not to let it stop me from being successful and doing what I need to. And again, I'm not ever afraid to say to somebody, I don't know the answer to that. I'm not techie in that way. So there you go, Susan. No, I don't know. I'm not sure what you mean by need to purchase multiple products. So I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not totally following what you mean by that. So if you want to expand on that, maybe I will understand. I don't, I don't want to make an assumption on that. But again, thanks everybody. I'm about to end the webinar, but thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. You can email me with any questions. Um, but yeah, hopefully that answered some of it. Hopefully you kind of get an idea of how it comes together with blogging. It's kind of funny. I didn't share this, but you know, for years my children and my husband used to always say to me, I don't know how to explain to people what it is that you do. When people ask me what you do, I don't need um, to, I, I, don't, I don't know what to say to them. And the honest answer is I never knew what to tell people either when people would ask me. It's like, well, I do some network marketing, but I also, you know, do it on social media and I do a lot on the internet. You know, I don't, I don't build network marketing in the traditional way that most people do and that kind of thing. And it was very hard to say. And then all of a sudden it just hit me. I'm a professional blogger. I get paid to blog because that's where everything I do drives people back to my blog which ultimately, you know, puts people into my network marketing opportunity or puts people into different things like that. But when you think about a professional blogger like the Huffington Post, for instance, or some of those, they're all monetized through advertisers and that type thing. I don't monetize my blog in that way. I've monetized it in other ways, but it's, you know, made millions of dollars over the course of 13 and a half years. So, you know, once, once I was able to that, I even told my family the other day, I'm like, I, I finally have an answer for you of what it is that I do. So hopefully that'll help you too. And you know what? There's a huge niche market out there of people who say, yeah, I want to learn how to get paid blogging. 
and we have the ability to teach them products. Yes, we will be offering other training packages and different things like that. Do you have to purchase them? No, you won't have to. It'll absolutely be an option, but it is going to be something out there that's available. So thanks to everybody for being here, and I will look forward to seeing you all soon on another webinar and answering any questions that you have, and hopefully welcoming you to Pure Leverage where we can get you plugged in and going too. So get back with whoever invited you. If it wasn't me, get back with who invited you and get those questions answered. And